Good morning. We've been sent a case today to evaluate an edentulous site, well, kind of edentulous site, uh, number 19. Um, uh, the email uh, said, I, I took a classic scan due to the number of restoration and scatter I knew I'd get. The SSI file for the Sierra Crown design won't integrate cleanly. Plus, there's a buckle ridge defect in the retained root fragment. Please give me some concepts on this. So, um, let's start with the talk about the classic, classic scan versus the OptiGuide scan. So, uh, in looking at this uh, scan that we see it as we see it here, uh, I, I do agree that uh, the safe bet on a situation like this is to do a classic guide. And here you can see the classic guide, the fiduciary markers in the scan. And this classic guide is a pre-made bite plate with the fiduciary markers that you reline with bite registration material in the situation of a dentate patient. Uh, and then you take the scan with that in the mouth. Uh, the classic guide is used in scenarios of extreme scatter. That scatter is typically from circumferential restorations, uh, which would not allow our CAD CAM data to integrate properly. Uh, so this was a good call. Now just to be a little bit more specific on this one, what I'd like to do is was also submitted was a photograph of this particular patient. Okay, And uh, with that photograph right there, we can see. Now what I do want to point out though is these teeth 27, 28, sorry, 26, 27, 28, and 22, 21 and 20 are all integratable. By that I mean these are natural teeth that could be used to bring in a CEREC scan. So when we're bringing the CEREC data, we would want to focus on using these teeth as our points. And I'll point that out to you as we go through this one here. Uh, so let's start uh, by taking a look at this submitted implant plan. Um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and duplicate this so we can compare. And let's go through our checklist. Um, actually, before we do that, let's take a look at what we see on the Panorex version here. And we do see a retained root right here. So we do know that that needs to be removed and it provides a slight complication to our implant placement. So let's take a closer look at that. To do that, we'll simply come here in the 3D view and double click. And here we can see uh, that there's our root right there and right there. Uh, the good news on this is that there is access to the root from the side. So we could come down here to the buckle. Uh, uh, down the buckle plate of the uh, of the man mandible here and uh, get access to that root um, versus having to drill straight down. Now in some situations depending on where the implants can be placed you could do the osteotomy and try to tease it out but given the buckle displacement of that root uh, my guess would be that side entry would be the best. Now of course one thing we do have to keep in mind is the proximity of the nerve and just to give you an idea we can see the nerve canal kind of right there so we have some room here to make sure that we get access to this part right here and our nerve canal looks to be down here so so we know we have to get this out. Now let's go ahead and focus on our actual implant plan. Uh, so um, a couple of things that I see right away as one, uh, we do have a ridge defect here. Okay, uh, as we can see, I'm going to outline our ridge. And we can see that our implant is going to be slightly out of our ridge there. 
uh, probably necessitating some some grafting there okay um, also what we can see what I see right away pretty much is also that our occlusal plane is off okay in an ideal world we would like this to be flat more along the lines of this so that's just an implant positioning issue so to fix that we would simply translate so I wrote uh, tilt the implant just like so until we see this become a little bit flatter like so so now we can see our occlusal plane is more normal as we'd like to see um, and also in looking at this right here in the axial view uh, because let me go backwards here sorry uh, because we um, tilted the implant we're now too distal so then we need to move this over to the mesial a little bit and get that a little bit better centered there um, now in terms of the bone level um, personally I would prefer to probably uh, not put it at the level of the bone and have to graft that much but somewhere in between something like this because when we do this type of surgery there'll be some uh, crestal bone resorption so we want to accept that there okay so our next step now is to bring in the CAD CAM data and uh, I'd like to go ahead and do that so here we have our CAD CAM data pulled up and if you remember again from our photograph right here we know which teeth we can use as integration points so we'll remember those teeth here so those teeth will be tooth number 23 22 21 so we'll do 23 I'll also do tooth number 21 and then on the patient's left hand side we will do number 27 and number 20 Nine. Sorry, 20. See, I made a mistake there. 29. Okay, so this should allow the software to register the CAD CAM data. Now, typically, we only need two points, but in a case where we have this much scatter, I like to give the software a little bit more information. And here we can see that we have a fairly accurate integration. Now, it won't always look completely accurate around the areas of scatter because the scatter itself make the teeth look a little bit odd shape there but I can tell you that this is going to be pretty accurate and now from this we can go through and idealize our plan so for example we can see that we need to tilt that implant to get the screw access a little bit to the mesial and maybe tilt the implant a little bit to the lingual to get the screw axe directly through the central groove so this would be probably my in my particular case uh, the final plan for this particular implant um, and then from an implant uh, planning perspective uh, this should work quite nicely um, now surgically uh, everybody's going to be at a different level of what they're comfortable with but surgically I would expect to have to raise a flap all the way down to here maybe do a little bit of bone contouring right here to gain access to this root to go ahead and tease that root out right through here and then do your osteotomy and then place your implant and then uh, graft around the exposed threads and in this defect site right here probably place a membrane over the top of this along with some PRP PRF and then suture over the gums uh, completely to get primary closure uh, so again surgically a very doable case um, prosthetically a very doable case uh, everything is just a matter of each individual comfort level. Uh, thank you for submitting the case and I hope you found the information very helpful.